competitive they are, to the tune of an estimated $200 million a year in sales. Post-it illustrates how tenaciously 3M seeks a product application for a new technology. And it exemplifies something else, the continuity within the diversity of 3M's product line. Like Post-it, the company originated with a mistake. In 1902, five Minnesota entrepreneurs bought a corundum mine and dubbed their new venture the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, 3M. They planned to sell the corundum as a commercial abrasive, but the ore was hopelessly low grade. In desperation, the company developed an improved sandpaper for use in Detroit's automobile plants and then invented masking tape. Today, tape and allied products account for 17% of 3M's over $7 billion in sales. But coating and bonding, attaching things to flat surfaces, is involved in many of their products. This continuity has helped 3M make the right choices as it diversifies and has shaped a self-image central to the corporate personality. No one puts it better than Dave Davies, a physical chemist at work on a new 3M product line. Now, one of the things I have found in a relatively short time with the company is that it thinks of itself as a company that's expert in what I would call two-dimensional products. By that I mean flat, thin products. And so, when I go to pitch my laser discs, which are a little different and come from a very different industry, the electronics industry, to make them feel comfortable, make them feel like I'm really in the mainstream of their activity, I like to convince them that I am also a two-dimensional product. So what I like to do is I like to convince them of that by always having a prop and by always showing them the prop at an angle so they see it as a two-dimensional product looking like, for example, sandpaper or a post-it note or uh, tape, for example, something that's sort of thin and flat. So I'm careful. I try to avoid holding the product up this way so that they see it as something alien and hold it up this way so subconsciously they feel comfortable with it. Dave Davies and his laser discs are a recent 3M acquisition. Three years ago, Davies was co-owner of a small Silicon Valley company developing the discs. 3M bought the company, designated it the optical recording project, and installed Davies as project manager. This kind of modest acquisition is typical. 3M likes to get to market first with products based on new technologies. The discs are processed in clean rooms, chambers sealed against even microscopic particles of dust. The value of a laser disc is its vast capacity for data storage. A laser beam can inscribe the Encyclopedia Britannica several times on the surface of one 12-inch disc like this, and the data can be accessed in a fraction of a second. Laser discs are expected to replace a whole line of floppy and hard disks now used in computers, a multi-billion dollar market. We all believe in this plan, right? We don't think it's sandbagged, so what do you think I should say in response? Davies is now at a crossroads in his operation. To mass produce the discs and bring them to market, he needs a scale-up allocation of $20 million. The final decision will be made in just a few days at corporate headquarters in St. Paul. To prepare for the meeting, Davies and his team hope to pinpoint the objections likely to arise when he makes his pitch. Jim Toits, for sure, is going to be very concerned, as he has been all along, about the amount of capital that the project's chewing up relative to the amount of cash that it's uh, bringing back we have to be able to establish the credibility of what we can produce farther down the pike relative to what we're using up front. Yeah. So it's hard to avoid the margin issue. That's right. I think you're right. We probably underestimated it. Yeah. And it's already a significant factor, so I'm a little nervous about the whole issue. Do you agree? Yeah. For Davies, the stakes are high. If he can build his project into a profitable business, he can count on 3M turning it into a new division and allowing him to run it as if it were his own company within the larger parent, a powerful incentive to succeed as an entrepreneur. In his bid for funding, Davies has already passed two major hurdles, reviews at the group and sector levels of the corporation. But what awaits him here in St. Paul is an intimidating encounter with 3M's highest court, the Executive Operations Committee. Ah! Okay, good luck, Dave. Oh, thanks. Come on in behind me, guys. I need help here. Good luck. Yeah. Oh, here comes the Welsh champion. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What I'm here, gentlemen, to uh, ask you for is approval for the expenditure of $20 million. 
Now, to request uh, approval of $20 million in, in this kind of product area, it's really a fairly simple issue. To my mind, there are three questions. Can we make it? Will someone buy it? And can we make a decent margin on it? And I think we'll spend most of the time analyzing in depth the financials. The financials Lou Lair, a veteran product champion himself, knows this game as well as anyone. Jim Twaits, president of international operations, is known to be unhappy about Davies' projected profit margins. Bob Adams, in charge of all 3M research. Al Jacobson, industrial and consumer sector. Al Huber, Davies' sector chief and major ally on the committee. Desi Desimoni, life sciences, and Ken Shane, graphic technologies. Is this agenda acceptable to you gentlemen? Fine, go ahead. We stand in a leadership role to do it. If we do it right, we can make margin on it. Good margin, traditional 3M margin, and it'll be a big business for us. But if Notice how, do, even in the heat of battle, Davies remembers to hold his disc flat. Nobody questions that. The question is, when you get into it, mm -hmm. how long can you stay with it without losing your shirt? Mm -hmm. What we have to rely on is the significant barrier to entry that will it w d happens. We are, for example, today the only producer of laser video discs, an American company in the States. That's because the investment, both in technology and in hardware and, and capital equipment, is very large. As you gentlemen know, you've already invested it. So there's a significant barrier to entry. Dave, do, do we have patents or patents applied for? Or do we have a position? We have patents applied for and indeed some granted on all the critical elements that make up this particular disc construction. They were continuing to let me roll and I thought we were doing very well there. And I just gotten over the point with Mr. Lair about uh, the patent position, which is always a difficult one. When in comes Mr. Twaits again on pricing and profitability. Why isn't the long-term profitability a lot higher? Initial price is not high enough. I've already come to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key answer to your question on Mr. Twaits is that it is Japan because Japan will be in a very strong position in this industry and will have an influence on the pricing. That's and they fine. But excuse me interrupting. That's fine. But somewhere along the line, if you're going to be out in front and you're going to be ahead of them, and you should be, mm -hmm. in the cycle you've got to get better pricing than you're showing in the book. Mm -hmm. What's your degree of confidence? I go back to the question I'm mm -hmm. still trying to get an answer to. What's your degree of confidence in the forecast you've made? I think my Every one of these men has been in Davy's shoes earlier in his own career, gambling that he can develop a successful venture from a new technology. They want Davies to win, but there is no fooling them where the numbers are concerned. They've been here before. So if they order less, they pay a lot more. You have just <laughs> read my mind. <laughs> when you talk about pricing. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, if we get serious about it, though, this team, uh, they sound pretty innovative. And the fact is that the uh, forecast projections are not going to give us the kind of yield that we need to do the job and to make the investments that mm -hmm. this type of business justifies. And the customer's going to do very, very well out of it. Uh, 3M company need to make more money to be able to invest more and make the program a success. That's the point where they threw you guys out of the room and really began to cream me with Twaits leading the charge. For 30 minutes, they put me through the hoop on pricing, profitability projections, and the return on investment. I really thought that I was not going to get the money at that point. In my assessment, to do this project right, it's going to require significant upfront pre-investment. And that's where my program probably differs from a lot of others that you see. I have factored in heavy investment in development costs, in scale-up costs, in pre-investment costs into this program. And it makes the f next four years of the program look quite bad. If we ran this to the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and ninth year, I think it would look a very attractive program. Al? Chairman, I'd like to move approval of the, of the proposal that we looked at today. I'll second it. Are there any questions or other suggestions? Aye. <coughs> Comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Very good. Thank you, Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate your attention. <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> <laughs> 3M Company has built its success on knowing how to maximize the talents of men like Dave Davies, at once an innovator and an entrepreneur. By encouraging him and Art Fry and a thousand others like them to take risks, and rewarding them handsomely when they succeed, 3M continues year after year to bring new products to market.